Good morning and welcome to this program of on the world no tobacco day from AIG hospitals. Tobacco and smoking have been rather intimately associated with humanity over the last hundred years and this has only worsened and increased to epidemic proportions in the past certain decades. It was only in the 1960s onwards that we recognized that tobacco is associated with an increased risk of cancers, with an increased risk of several lifestyle diseases and non-communicable diseases. In 1998, 1988, WHO decided to commemorate 31st May of every year as the World No Tobacco Day. Over the years, several programs have been done to help in tobacco de-addiction and in helping patients to quit. The theme for this year's World No Tobacco Day is Commit to quit and the goal is to make at least 100 million people quit smoking and tobacco usage in this year. Over the next some time, we shall discuss how tobacco is harmful to humans, how it is specifically of a different nature in India as compared to abroad, what we can do to reduce the incidence of tobacco and tobacco usage and how it affects different parts of the body. So, uh, we have an eminent panel of speakers. We will start off the discussion with Dr. Sridhar, who is a surgical oncologist at AIG Hospitals. He will be discussing the pathogenesis and the epidemiology of tobacco smoking, tobacco and smoking and how that causes cancers. I will be a, give a short lecture on the role of tobacco in oral cavity cancers. This will be followed by Dr. Raghav, a pulmonologist from AIG Hospital. Uh, he will touch upon the burning topic of smoking and COVID-19. COVID has completely changed our lives over the last one and a half years. There are quite a few myths associated with smoking as in COVID and he will seek to address these points. And finally, we will probably have the most important discussion by Dr. Naveen, who is our psychiatrist at AIG Hospital and an expert in de-addiction, who would talk on de-addiction strategies for tobacco and how we can make patients quit tobacco. So, starting off the lecture series today, I invite Dr. Sridhar, our surgical oncologist, who would be talking about the uh, how ca cancers are caused and what is the pathogenesis of tobacco. Over to you, Dr. Sridhar. So, thank you, Dr. Vamshi, for uh, inviting me to give a talk on uh, smoking and lung cancer on uh, uh, today being the World No Tobacco Day. So. <coughs> So we'll start off with the history of uh, smoking. So smoking is almost as uh, old as uh, the time. So uh, in the Americas, <coughs> in the year 5000 BC, uh, there were a lot of uh, shamanistic uh, rituals, uh, which were done by the so-called soothsayers in the Peruvian and the Ecuadorian Andes, where they used to smoke tobacco in order to uh, make and uh, you know communicate with the, uh, the so-called spirits. And this is a picture of a Mayan uh, smoking tube almost uh, circa 2000 BC. So smoking has got a very large and a, a long history. So the evolution of smoking is, uh, it started off initially, especially in the subcontinent from uh, smoking of cannabis. Um, and then it went to the opium, uh, especially when uh, opium became one of the uh, cash crops which are grown, especially in uh, Southeast Asia uh, and uh, China. And finally it evolved to the uh, smoking of uh, tobacco. So in the Indian perspective, uh, the Atharva Veda uh, itself shows that uh, cannabis uh, smoking, also known as the Somarasa, was uh, prevalent from almost 2000 BC onwards. And uh, smoke is used in different uh, 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 ways in India, like in uh, dhupa or fumigation, the homa or fire, the Persian hookah, and finally uh, dhumrapan or so-called cigarette, which is uh, which is very commonly used in in uh, North India. So essentially, there are two types of uh, tobacco. One could be smoked to tobacco, and second is the so-called smokeless tobacco. So the smoked tobacco include various forms or indigenous forms like BDs and the critique which is an Indonesian uh, form of cigarette, the western cigarette itself, cigars, water pipes, RYOs also called as roll your own cigarettes and then finally we are coming to the newer products like ENDs or the e-cigarettes and the heated tobacco products. So the smokeless tobacco which is extremely common in India and in fact it is uh, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal and other countries of the Southeast Asia. Uh, smokeless tobacco actually overshadows smoking tobacco, where tobacco, chewing tobacco in the form of either tobacco plain or in the form of gutka cane is very common. Moist snuff is common in the uh, northern United States, 
snus is a form of you know dry tobacco which is uh, seen in the uh, norwegian countries and then we have dry snuff and dissolvables so coming to the bd the bd is uh, the indigenous variant of uh, smoking which is uh, almost uh, 50% of the uh, smoking which is done in India is uh, by the BD where the tobacco is wrapped in a tendu leaf. The tendu leaf is uh, obtained from the, the East Indian ebony or the Coromandel ebony and the term uh, BD comes from the Marwadi term Bida which means uh, betel nut. Uh, the importance of BD is that it is a cottage industry which employs almost 3 million people, two thirds of which uh, are constituted by women. And uh, the health aspects include that it produces higher quantities of nicotine, carbon monoxide, tar, and uh, because of the solubility uh, of tobacco is higher in BD, it has a higher risk of oral cancers uh, than cigarette smoking. And the critique is uh, an Indonesian variant uh, which contains uh, flavored tobacco uh, which is flavored with clove buds uh, and nutmeg. So the clove contains an anesthetic, anesthetic agent called eugenol and the eugenol uh, essentially ensures that the harshness uh, or the alkaline nature of tobacco is uh, decreased and therefore it makes it more palatable. Then we have cigars uh, which are uh, well known especially the Cuban varieties of cigars also the North American varieties. So the cigar contains uh, tobacco uh, which is uh, actually the filler and then we have a binding agent which keeps the tobacco together surrounded by a wrapper uh, which can be uh, uh, coated with various uh, adjectives to make it uh, uh, more palatable and finally the cut and you can see that the cutter here is uh, used for cutting the end of the, uh, the cigar before it is actually lit up. So the pipe smoke is another variety which is seen in, uh, uh, in India and also in the North African countries known as hookah or shisha and nowadays it has become a lifestyle choice amongst the youth but uh, just because it does not use burnt tobacco or other aerosolized form of tobacco which is placed through a water vaporizer which is present at the bottom of the hookah, uh, it does not mean that it does not have any health hazards because a uh, lot of toxins which are not filtered by water are taken up. And obviously because the hookah is passed around from one person to another person especially in these hookah bars, the risk of infectious disease is quite high. So if you have to define a cigarette, a cigarette is uh, defined as a tobacco derived product for nicotine delivery. And over the past 100 or 120 years or so, this uh, has not actually changed. It is actually purely a nicotine delivery device uh, where, use, where a tobacco product is used. So the general cigarette contains uh, mainly two parts. One is known as the filter and the second is known as the stem of the cigarette which actually contains the tobacco. And all the so called engineering or the uh, scientific advances which are seen is, is confined to these two parts only that is the filter as well as the, uh, the stem of the cigarette. So the cigarette smoke is the most important uh, aspect which causes uh, cancer in humans uh, specifically lung cancer. It contains basically uh, two phases the gas phase and the tar phase. The tar phase is also called as the particulate phase also called as CSC or the uh, cigarette smoke condensate. So in order to know uh, what, is a, what is a tar phase or what is a gas phase, we use industrial machines uh, to and burn cigarettes through them and they pass it through a special kind of glass filter called as the Cambridge glass filter which has got a diameter of 0.3 micron. So all the solid residual material which is left behind after the cigarette is smoked through the glass filter is called as the uh, the tar phase and the rest constitutes the, the gas phase. So the gas phase uh, of cigarette smoke can be of two types. One is known as the mainstream smoke and the second is known as the side stream smoke. So the mainstream so smoke is actually the smoke which is inhaled and puffed out uh, from the butt end of the cigarette. And the side stream smoke is the smoke which is uh, emanated when the uh, smoldering of the coal which is formed at the tip of the smoke. So uh, cigarette smoke both first hand smoke as well as second hand smoke is a combination of this mainstream smoke as well as side stream smoke and also some part of the gas which passes through the various filters. So the differences uh, between uh, the two types of uh, smoke that is the mainstream smoke and side stream smoke is uh, the mainstream smoke delivers less amount of nicotine whereas the side stream smoke uh, delivers a higher form of uh, nicotine delivery and all the uh, major levels like you know cyanide and the other carcinogens like uh, Paris, uh, PAH levels, uh, N nitrosamines, ammonia, uh, they are all lower in the mainstream smoke rather than the science stream smoke. So cigarette design that is all the technology which is used to impact 
how a cigarette is made, how, what amount of tobacco is used and uh, what is the diameter, the use of ventilation vents or not, all this does not impact the mainstream smoke, uh, rather it impacts only the mainstream smoke, it does not impact the side stream aspect of the smoke. So the next part as I said is the particulate part or the tar. So tar can be defined as the total particulate matter minus nicotine and the water content. So initially from the 1950s onwards uh, most of the small cigarettes which were used worldwide were unfiltered but then various reports started coming around stating that uh, the harmful effects of uh, cigarette and most of it was due to the what was at that time thought was due to the, the particulate aspect rather than the, the gaseous aspect and therefore the cigarette manufacturers started converting their smokes, uh, smoke uh, the unfiltered cigarettes into uh, filtered cigarettes. So by 1960 almost 60 percent of the total cigarette market was filtered and by 2005 onwards uh, almost 100 percent of the market contains only um, filtered cigarettes. So the factors which affect the particulate matter uh, include as I said cigarette filters, the blend of tobacco whether it is an oriental tobacco which is common in India or the burly tobacco which is used in the United States and the use of ventilation holes which aid in the amount of gas which mixes with the burning of the tobacco, the porosity of the paper which is used for binding the cigarette and the weight of the tobacco also which is used. So the various changes which are made by big tobacco uh, with the aim or rather with the aim of misleading um, uh, tobacco and the general population is the use of filters and the presence of ventilated vents and newer products. So once the data started coming out that there are a large number of carcinogens, then uh, the big tobacco companies started attacking individual carcinogenic agents. So they came up with new products like Omni and Advance in which they only decrease the, the uh, concentration of the n nitrosamines and then once it was proven that the main addictive agent is nicotine, they came up with low nicotine alternatives called as Eclipse. So, a cigarette is actually an engineered product. In fact, in if you have to see the single biggest product which undergoes a maximum amount of um, research by the major tobacco companies well funded is, is the cigarette and every aspect of the cigarette has, has been done uh, with the primary aim of ensuring that uh, the nicotine is delivered, a patient is addicted and carcinogenic agents are uh, given to the individual. So the filter aspect is made from bundles of thin hair like fibers. So the aim of the cigarette was to trap the particulate matter but unfortunately most cigarettes lead smokers to do what is known as cigarette, cigarette change their cigarette or smoking topography that is they take larger puffs, deeper puffs, more frequent puffs. The second is use of the filter uh, cigarette paper. So the manufacturers add chemicals to the paper and it controls how fast the cigarette burns. So if the cigarette is burnt faster then the patient uh, again starts going for more number of cigarettes therefore increasing the number of cigarettes used and therefore increasing the profits of the major tobacco companies. So the tobacco filler which is used. So there are various processing techniques, they can be air cured tobacco, they can be fire cured uh, tobacco, uh, reprocessed tobacco, dangerous chemicals are added to tobacco um, and all of these creates an additive effect. The next is the ventilation holes, this was marketed very extensively by, by the various tobacco companies stating that by adding the number of ventilation holes, uh, it increased the amount of air which was entering and therefore led to more, more uh, better burn of the cigarette and therefore reducing the carcinogenic agents which are formed by unburnt tobacco. But even the design of the ventilation holes you can see it is extremely close to where a person actually holds the, uh, the cigarette product. It is here where, the, where the actually uh, the, the person holds it with his fingers and this, res this is responsible for closing most of the time the ventilation holes. But during the, uh, and the second thing is it can also be covered by the lips uh, when it is placed within the mouth. And the last is the add addition of various additive agents. We are seeing large number of cigarettes which are sugar flavored, menthol flavored and all of this reduces the harshness of uh, the cigarette and therefore is responsible for uh, increasing the cigarette content. So coming to the other forms like ENDs, END stands for electronic nicotine delivery devices and END stands for electronic non-nicotine del delivery devices. So these do not burn tobacco but rather they vaporize tobacco through by passing it through a a vaporizer and uh, they contain glycerol, polypropylene, glycol. These are actually not safe because they target youth and women and, and responsible for nicotine addiction. 
and the final form which is now being uh, is that most of the uh, products which are seen are due to the burning of tobacco and therefore they are now what is used as HTPS or heated tobacco products wherein which the tobacco is heated not burnt and uh, they claim not to produce tar because uh, there is no burn and this is also a form of vaping only and uh, even this has got its own health risks. So the burden of tobacco is extremely large, it is estimated to have killed almost um, 1 billion people in the 21st century and 100 million already dead in the 20th century, 8 million deaths per annum and 7 million due to direct tobacco use and 1.2 million due to the SHS or second hand smoke. India constitutes almost 12 percent of the world's smokers and 120 million smokers, most of the uh, smokers in India are males with 1 in 5 males are being a smoker. So there are what, what constitutes a smoker, from the epidemiological point of view we divide smokers into basically two types, a never smoker and a never smoker. A never smoker is anybody who has got less than, who has taken less than 100 cigarettes in his person's lifetime and a never smoker can be further divided into a former smoker, current, a recent smoker or a current smoker. So a former smoker is defined as the one who has not had any cigarette uh, over the past one year and from one week to one year if he has had no cigarettes then it is called recent smoker and current smoker is one who is actively smoking. This is important for uh, epidemiological aspects. So the disease burden, uh, smoking as well as second hand smoke causes a large, all of these are taken from the United States uh, Surgeon General report which was uh, published again uh, the latest one in 2010. So you can see that there are a large number of cancers as well as the non-carcinogenic uh, lifestyle diseases like stroke, blindness, cataract, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, anything, most of these are associated with uh, both smoking as well as second hand smoke. So smokeless tobacco, India as you see star falls in the red zone where India and Bangladesh constitutes the largest proportion, almost 59 percent of the males and about 56 percent of females are using smokeless tobacco which is a much larger burden as compared to smoked tobacco. The age of initiation of uh, smoking in India is about 17 years which is just short of the, uh, the number one which is in the former Russian Federation in which the average age of initiation is about 16 years. The quit ratio, so what is a quit ratio? Quit ratio means the percentage of people who have who are former smokers to ever smokers. So this is an, this gives an index about the uh, various health uh, um, uh, programs and how they are working. So the three largest um, uh, populations that is India, China, Indonesia and also the, the Soviet Union, the quit ratio is less than 20 percent. So ideally for a good um, a tobacco control program, the quit ratio should be more than 40 percent and the number of cigarettes smoked. So the average uh, number of cigarettes uh, smoked in India is about 6 per day which is relatively less uh, whereas compared to other countries like Russian Federation where uh, uh, more than 20 cigarettes are smoked per day and these are classified as heavy smokers. The impact of health warnings in India is also extremely poor, less than 30 percent of the patients or people in India actually see the health warnings and are, and are actually deterred by it. So ideally if it is more than 50 to 60 percent it means that your various advertisements and health uh, programs are actually working. So the association between tobacco and cancer was initially given by two seminal studies by Doll and Hill in UK and Winter and Grammar in US and, uh, and also by the US Surgeon General's report which was first published in 1964 after which the IARC has categorized tobacco as well as cigarette smoke as a, a category 1 carcinogen which means that there is a definite uh, relationship between tobacco smoke and various forms of cancer. So the report uh, for, uh, for uh, defining whether, whether is something is a carcinogenic agent is something like our Cox postulates for infectious diseases. There should be a consistency of association, there should be strength, there should be specificity that is cigarette smoke itself should be associated, no other agent should be associated with smoke, with uh, cancer, the coherence and temporal relationship. So even in spite of this, um, actually 15 to 20 percent of lung cancers are not caused by smoker, by smoking. And this constitutes a large chunk, uh, relatively large chunk especially in uh, the western countries where in which smoking rates are coming down and especially among women uh, and in other smokers the incidence of lung cancer is coming up. But the cumulative lifetime risk of lung cancer for a smoker in his 8th decade of life is about 16 percent. So there are various carcinogens, uh, almost 69 carcinogens are known uh, within cigarette smoke itself. The most important which cause lung cancer are the TSNAs or the tobacco specific nitrosamines and the PAH or the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons uh, but the rest of them can also cause other cancers like leukemias and bladder cancer, cervical cancers. So cigarette smoke is defined as a concentrated aerosol of liquid particles 
which is suspended in an atmosphere of various gases like carbon dioxide, copper monoxide, nitrogen and oxygen. So there are three phases which go in cigarette smoke, one is condensation, second is pyrolysis and third is distillation of the various products. So again the nitrosamines, uh, the most important ones are NNK and NNN and um, these are formed during the curing and the processing and storage of tobacco and uh, the factors which affect it are the type of tobacco which is used, the use of nitrogen fertilizers, the level of nitrogen dioxide during curing and uh, reducing the storage time, the higher the storage time the greater the nitrosamines. So incomplete combustion of or natural organic matter like wood, petroleum and tobacco cause release of pH and uh, so basically burning of tobacco only releases it. So heated tobacco products will not uh, cause this to grow but the increased nitrate content can reduce it but conversely increase the uh, incidence of nitrosamines. So then there are again volatile compounds, these constitute the most carcinogenic compounds of cigarette smoke, these include benzene, aromat aromatics, carbonyls, nitrines, I am not going to the details. All you need to know is that there are some heavy metals also like cadmium, lead, radon and this is not seen in tobacco itself but rather from the soil in which the tobacco is grown and the use of pesticides. So we come to the most important product that is nicotine and uh, pre-nicotine. Nicotine is a plant alkaloid which is derived from tobacco. The name nicotine is given from Franco and Nico who brought it to the uh, European continent from uh, the South Americas. It is addictive mainly because it resembles the acetylcholine which is a brain neurotransmitter. It is of two, for two main types, an unprotonated or an uh, non-ionized form and an ionized form. Whereas the, the volatility at the, or the rate at which it is uh, dispersed within the respiratory tract is higher in the uh, unionized form. So you can see that uh, there are various nicotine delivery systems of which the arterial concentration of uh, nicotine is maximum when you go through cigarette smoking. It is in 19 seconds it reaches a peak uh, arterial concentration whereas with oral snuff and the various nicotine patches uh, it, it, uh, it takes a long time to reach its uh, peak. So because the peak uh, is reached faster and the trough is also faster in um, cigarette smoke this is increases the cigarette uh, the uh, additive uh, the addictive potential of cigarette that's what so cigarette is liked most uh, nicotine is liked most by uh, when the patient smokes it and it's like least when it is placed in the form of patch simply because the the uh, peak concentration levels are not reached uh, as early in a smoked cigarette so the components of nicotine addiction are uh, initially there is a chronic tolerance which develops uh, the patient uh, starts getting used to higher and higher quantities of to generate the same uh, response. Then once it is withdrawn the patient gets psychosomatic symptoms like uh, fidgetiness and uh, increase in the heart rate, pulse rate, sweating and finally because of this the patient again undergoes reinforcement. He takes more cigarettes uh, to, to overcome the withdrawal and uh, to gain the better effect and this becomes a vicious cycle. So additives, so additives are uh, these are things which are added to increase the palatability of cigarettes like menthol, sugars and um, these are also causing a large number of uh, patient uh, people to uh, tra uh, transform into uh, cigarette smokers because it reduces the harshness which is commonly associated with the alkaloid uh, uh, tobacco. And what is second hand smoke? This is also called as uh, <coughs> passive smoking. So any patient, there is no lower limit beyond which uh, you can say that passive smoking is actually harmless and uh, any person for a, even a small period of time there is an increased uh, almost 20 to 30 percent increased risk of cancer both in children as well as in adults. So the mechanisms I will not go into the details, what generally happens is that uh, once there is initiation of cigarette or nicotine addiction it leads to the uptake of various carcinogens. These are then metabolized in the body by the various metabolic processes like the cytochrome P50 uh, and acetyl acetylation. These form then DNA adducts and leads to various mutations leading to carcinogenesis. In general this is the way in which um, tobacco causes cancer. So how do we prevent uh, lung cancer? So essentially there are three stages of um, prevention. One is a primordial prevention that is before the, uh, this is at the population level by using various uh, national control, cancer control programs and advertisements, legislations. The next is the primary prevention that is screening and the third is uh, secondary prevention that is early diagnosis and treatment of uh, lung cancers. So primordial prevention in 2003 uh, WHO uh, came up with the FCTC or the framework for the control of tobacco control uh, which was uh, ratified uh, in, uh, by almost 180 country, uh, countries including India which is a signatory. 
So it takes into account three measures. That is the price and tax measures. The tax tobacco products much larger than the non-tobacco products, and various non-price measures, wherein which you know um, cigarettes are not given within 100 meters of you know educational institutions, and a supply side reduction, wherein which children are not uh, used in either the sale or the procurement or for the uh, buying of uh, tobacco. So there are various. Uh, uh, aspects of this which are being implemented to varying degrees by uh, various countries and uh, they also started off with the GTSS or the global tobacco surveillance system wherein which they have got uh, uh, surveys every three to four years for youth as well as adults and these are rep uh, repeatedly updated and there is a questionnaire which has uh, come uh, which has to be uh, standardized across the various tobacco control programs across various countries. So in India uh, we have the COTPA or the Cigarettes and to Other Tobacco Products Act in 2003 wherein which uh, smoking in public places is prohibited, direct and indirect advertisements of tobacco products and sponsorship are prohibited, prohibited. sale of tobacco to and by minors less than 18 years is prohibited and sale and uh, tobacco products within 100 years of educational institutions and it is mandated to, to display the pictorial warnings which came up in uh, section 7 especially in 2009. So there are certain smoke free uh, cities like Chandigarh and Shimla and Kerala was one of the first states which will have a regional complete public smoking ban and in 2019 uh, India has also banned the uh, sale of e-cigarettes or the ENDs which is a good uh, step in tobacco control. So the timeline we can see that initially in 1999 uh, the global youth tobacco survey was first commenced, the FCTC came into bearing in 2005 and the first GATT survey was launched in 2007 and now we have moved on to various other uh, uh, things like the GTCC web, web application and so on. So what is MPower? MPower is uh, the FCTC guidelines for uh, preventing tobacco or M stands for uh, we should monitor tobacco and uh, use and prevention practices, uh, protect people from tobacco smoke, offer help to quit tobacco, warn about the dangers of tobacco, uh, enforce bans on tobacco advertising and raise taxes on tobacco products. So how do you ask people to? Uh, uh, cessate from smoking, there is a five A's that is you should ask, advise, uh, assist, assess, assist and arrange. Another phase which it is called is AAR or AAC that is ask, advise and refer or ask, advise and uh, connect. So this will be taken uh, talked to by Dr. Uh, Naveen who is going to talk about the addictive aspects and de-addiction aspects of uh, cigarette smoking. So the primary prevention, there are not various trials, the most important trial was the NSLT trial or the National uh, Lung Cancer Screening Trial which came out in 2002 and uh, what they found was in, in uh, heavy smokers that is who have got a pack year history of more than 30 pack years or within 15 years of abstinence who are in the age group of 50 to 74 years, if they are screened using a, a form of CT scan called as low dose CT, and there is a 20% uh, mortality reduction. But of course this cannot be uh, applied to an individual patient. It has to be done in centers which have got high uh, thoracic oncology loads and uh, good radiological uh, uh, facilities. It cannot be implemented ad, ad hoc for every individual person. Secondary prevention again is, uh, is uh, regarding early detection and treatment and stage wise management as we know for stage, early stages it is stage 1 it is surgery and plus or minus chemotherapy and for stage 3 and, uh, and stage 4 onwards it is multimodality treatment. So to conclude smoking is one of the most common preventable causes of lung cancer. We need a multi-pronged approach uh, which is required to defeat it that includes legislation, pharmacology, counseling, de-addiction, screening and also early diagnosis and treatment. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Sridhar. I think that was an exhaustive and extremely well articulated talk on what smoking is, what are the various forms of smoking, what is the harm done by various forms of smoking as well as by tobacco. He did touch upon where we can also try to reduce smoking, how to do the de-addiction. My next talk will be focusing a little bit on tobacco and oral cancers. Dr. Sridhar spoke a lot about what tobacco contains, how it will affect people and what we have seen is we say all this to patients and the end of the day they kind of do not understand what we are talking because it has not affected them personally. Let me tell you the story of our patients. These are patients we see in and out. These are patients whom we are seeing getting affected by tobacco who are dying because of smoking and tobacco. 
we have patients last patient we saw a young 42 year old gentleman who came to us with only complaints of pain in the oral cavity being a hard working person being the breadwinner of his family he neglected these symptoms for a long time finally after 6 months when he came to us he found out that there was an ulcer in the teeth which was large it had kind of dislodged one of the teeth and we did a scan and we found that unfortunately he had a cancer that was locally advanced going right into the almost up to the skull base this sort of patients cannot be treated with a simple surgery we needed to give him chemotherapy he has undergone a surgery and then he will require radiotherapy as well despite all this the curative potential of this patient is not 100% there is a 50% chance that he may get the cancer back within 2 3 months that is the kind of disease that we are dealing with when we talk of tobacco and oral cancers it is a real human cost it is simple to say that this is an abstract and cancer is maybe caused in somebody but when we actually deal with patients you realize that people are taking all this a little lightly so the goal of my lecture today is just to bring out the fact that it is not as simple as it sounds getting a cancer is something that can affect the entire family and can lead to a scar on the family for generations to come when we talk of smoking tobacco and oral cancer most patients simply tell us oh we don't smoke please understand it is not smoking alone that causes cancer though of course it is one of the most important things but tobacco in all its forms that can lead to oral cancers so when we talk of tobacco it is an epidemic and it is an epidemic which is not being realized by people it is not being known by people the most egregious fact of all the tobacco cancer in india is the early age of onset now surveys have said that when you look at children as young as ages 13 to 15 one in 10 have smoked a cigarette of some time or the other there are some states where 65 to 70% of students have reported consuming tobacco at an age which is less than 10 years remember this is not smoking this is tobacco which people think is harmless there are colleges where more than 70% of students are using tobacco for oral cavity cancer it is not merely smoking it is tobacco that really causes cancer it causes cancer because it can lead to a chronic irritation both in the oral cavity and around that area which can predispose to a cancer this tobacco can be in the form of several local products like khaini zarda all of these can lead to cancer so patients often come and tell us in the young age which is the most productive age of their life which is the earning period of life they get affected by a cancer and their commonest response is oh we thought this is not smoking so it will not harm us the second thing which often patients tell us is that this we did not expect at such a young age please remember tobacco causes cancers at a young age it causes people to develop cancers at an early age and can affect them to a large extent of course when we talk of a cigarette alone we know this is what uh, dr shridhar spoke so eloquently about every part of a cigarette is harmful it is a poison right from its tip to the other end every part of it will have some or the other chemicals or a carcinogens that can form cancers perhaps the most invidious part about oral cavity cancers and tobacco is number one the ease at which it is available go to any shop you will find all these things hanging and these things are available very easily credit where it's due there have been laws the government is trying to bring down the exposure to tobacco uh, however there's a rather powerful lobby that is not really allowing us to do it in full and the products of tobacco are so easily available any shop neighborhood shop in fact most ironically right outside a hospital is where you would actually get all of these things available easily patients would just walk out there would be like 4 hours or 5 hours without tobacco exposure straight go and take more tobacco that's the unfortunate reality of tobacco in india when we talk of specifically oral cavity cancers these are the kind of pictures that are horrifying that cause a lot of a uh, mental distress to everyone please understand this is something that as oncologists we are seeing every day patients who are smoking or have tobacco exposure are 50 times more likely 
to die from a cancer of the mouth. Again, we are talking about death here. The last one and a half years has really focused our attention on deaths with all the COVID going on. But this is where we really are seeing younger patients getting affected and dying because of cancer. Even throat cancer, it's a horrifying picture again, but this is what we will see if you ignore the role of tobacco. They are 10 times more likely to die from cancers of the throat. Beyond this, all of us have seen videos and different places. Most commonly in the movie halls, you go to watch a movie and you get to see a reel of people or video of a person suffering from cancer from Tata Hospital and people tend to ignore it. What they don't realize is that if tobacco and smoking is continued, this could be your somebody you know personally. And as a doctor working in that same institute, we have crossed that ward several times and we know that what is shown is not an exaggeration. What is shown is not something that is being made just to scare people but a reality. And the more you talk to people, the more you talk to and interact with patients who are suffering from cancer, one thing we realize is a regret that smoking should have been stopped earlier. Tobacco could have been stopped earlier. And that is the theme of the last session for today. Doc our psychiatrist will talk about how de-addiction can be done. And for me, that would be the most important part of today's lectures. In the meantime, there are several such photos. Remember, a cancer will not just present with a huge growth. It is not something that is easily available. Even small early warning signs, like a little bit of an ulcer, like a small bleeding spot on the tongue, could be a cancer. Please get it checked out. Poor dentition could be hiding a cancer behind. Again, needs to be evaluated, needs to be checked out. Till a patient arrives at such a stage where half the tongue is involved, that's probably too late. We need to catch cancers early. And remember that there are certain features which would be precancerous, which would later on lead to a cancer but still needs to be tested. So if I have to summarize, tobacco in all forms, smoking or chewing is associated with oral cavity cancers. This is because of local irritation and changes in the lining. Most importantly, it affects young people disproportionately and even women are at risk not because of smoking but because of tobacco chewing. Simple word, two word message to everyone, stop tobacco. And that's all I would like to say on this topic. Thank you. The next talk is on something slightly a digression from cancers. However, it is also something that is gathering attention. The role of smoking and COVID-19. Uh, people still don't know much about COVID and there is more myths generated about COVID and about its causes in the last one year than I think in the last 50 years for any cancer. Here to debunk some of those myths is Dr. Raghav, who is a pulmonologist at AIG Hospital, and he will be talking about smoking and COVID-19. Over to you, Dr. Raghav. Thank you. Presently working in the Department of Pulmonology. In the next 10 minutes, I would take you to the topic of smoking and COVID, how they are interrelated. I would be discussing, rather answering a couple of questions do smokers tend to smoke more or less during this time of COVID pandemic? Are COVID smokers actually protected or are they at a higher risk to get COVID? And if at all they are at a higher risk to get COVID, do they have a more severe disease? And is it time to quit? So going upon the smoking pattern, smoking people tend to respond in different ways. Some of them actually tend to smoke more, some of them tend to quit. Those who people who intend to quit might have a regret, might have a thing about having a severe disease once they are affected. On the other hand, people are experiencing unusual stress. People might smoke more actually to get their boredom relieved. So people tend to respond in both the ways. But what does evidence say to us? In almost like 50,000 online evaluation from UK, people responded. The smoking pattern in 43% remained unchanged. The remaining 43% actually had an increase in their smoking quantity, while 13% actually decreased the smoking. So in this 13%, they were actually who smoked a lesser amount than those who used to smoke heavy smokers. All these smokers actually also had a higher stress compared to ex-smokers, compared to those who reformed smokers, or to the general population. Also, all these smokers, they had a lesser adherence 
to protective behaviors in the pandemic well that was on the mid of 2020 then a recent who bulletin a couple of days back actually said like millions of tobacco users still want to quit nearly 60 percent of tobacco users want to quit but 30 percent of them actually have access to tobacco cessation services well then coming to the most interesting topic does smoking reduce covid initially there were a lot of reports lot of data from china elsewhere which actually suggested that smokers are less affected because of covid there was no increased tendency to get severe covid because of smoking well there were papers which actually suggested the same as we go through this this was an observational study from france which suggests that daily smokers have very much lower probability of developing symptomatic covid then there was another systematic review considered as the highest grade of evidence which again says an unusually low prevalence of current smoking was observed as compared to the population smoking prevalence well this was followed by multiple media the daily mail online the telegraph the moroccan world news webmd everywhere headlines started smokers are less hospitalized with covid well and another journal which came up a highly accepted journal of european medical journal which said like 23 percent less risk to contract covid just we are all are all as perplexed as this person we really don't know how what to say with this it basically beats a very intuitive that smoking is injurious to health which we are all very accustomed just as a nursing rhyme smoking is injurious to health and causes lung cancer then what do we do we just need to take a moment to think take a moment to think it doesn't happen it's a big no so there is no real reality in this smokers paradox all this data has to be reviewed with extreme caution what we are actually missing is more scientific people had sample bias reporter bias active smokers were actually underrepresented when this scientific data is published we need to read in integrity careful interpretation is the need of our and nothing less some of these studies were actually sponsored studies sponsored by the tobacco industry and one of these studies had actually to be retracted following this dis affiliation with tobacco companies well if at all any how does smoking affect covid the simple common sense how do people smoke what is the act of smoking it requires some hand to mouth coordination process involving exhalation people tend to socialize and share so if at all anything just by common sense we can just understand that it should only aid in spreading covid it doesn't reduce the spreading in covid so the only benefit or probably a speculated benefit was from the nicotine which is found in these smokes cigarettes still we are scantering for the strong evidence we don't have any data there are six trials which are underway all of them are from france to be noted so one thing is for sure smoking does increase the risk of getting covid then the next question to be answered do smokers have a more severe disease yes and that is beyond doubt smokers would have more oxygen requirement they would require a prolonged hospital stay they will have more complications and also more deaths and this is really beyond doubt there have been multiple publications multiple meta-analysis of more than 10,000 patients all of them which unanimously state like smokers tend to have a more severe disease then if it's a severe disease how severe almost like 1.5 to 4.5 times compared to non-smokers 1.5 to 4.5 times 4.5 times in those who actually had a high smoking index also this exhibited a linear relationship meaning those who smoke more tend to have more severe disease so should we consider quitting yes quitting is never too late there is no bigger motivation than the present health pandemic to start quitting. Quitting is not a pro single time act. It's a process. It takes time. It takes a repetitive in interest. So with the very thought of quitting should provoke one to quit. People in this pandemic have decreased social interaction, decreased peer pressure, and also have a change in their daily routine activities, which should help in quitting. So do we people benefit after quitting? yes the age-old graph which everyone shows people stopping smoking at any point of time in their life do actually benefit from stopping 
that lung functions improve or rather decrease less faster as compared to those with smokers. So stop smoking at any point of time. The benefits of stopping smoking would start as early as 20 minutes as a person stops smoking and would go on and on as they continue to stop smoking. The benefits are also seen almost up to 15 years when the risk of other complications due to smoking would be equivalent to that of a person who had never smoked. Well, something at the end of the talk, a recent bulletin a couple of days back by WHO which says like has awarded a special award to the Indian government Ministry of Health in for having exceptional achievement in tobacco control. Well, and the next thing is this WHO also allows us with multiple social media apps like the Viber, WhatsApp, FB Messenger wherein they help in free digital quitting ads. Yes, quitters are winners as far as tobacco is considered. Quitters are winners and the theme for this no, World No Tobacco Day is commit to quit and we should do that. And yet, as, a com as we come to the conclusion, I would add that to yet to every bad there is worse. And now what bad are we facing are the smokers lungs. Yes, it is as bad as it is being depicted. And what is as bad as that are the COVID lungs. Smoking is as bad as COVID and what together COVID and smoking could do is only worse. And we here need to prevent that worse from happening. And thank you. Thank you, Dr. Raghav. To every bad, there is a worth. I think that is the theme we should pick up from this. If you want to follow Facebook and WhatsApp forwards, please follow legitimate ones like this broadcast and listen to Dr. Raghav. Smoking does not help you with COVID. I think a resounding message that really needs to go out in the flood of misinformation that we are getting, there's definitely no benefit of smoking or tobacco in reducing COVID. I think the other point which Dr. Raghav has brilliantly brought about is the theme of this year's World No Tobacco Day, commit to quit. We should help everybody try to quit. And that would be what our next speaker, Dr. Naveen, who is a psychiatrist and a de-addictions expert. He's one of the few people in, in fact, not just Hyderabad, but the entirety of South India who have actually done a degree, a DM degree in de-addiction from the prestigious All India Institute, New Delhi. So over to you, Dr. Naveen. Thank you, Dr. Ramshi. And uh, excellent talk by the previous my speaker, Dr. Raghav, who, and as well as previous speaker, my Dr. Ramshi, has covered the harmful effects about the tobacco. And as well as now we have to talk on the how do we have to stop this tobacco use. That is called tobacco cessation. So, first, before going to that, I would like to first briefly introduce the, about the what is dependent. So, what in our te terminology, all it say it's a okay, cognitive, behavioral and as well as physiological. That is the symptoms indicates a person. He has the impaired control over his tobacco use and as well as he continues despite having of adverse consequences. So, with this introduction of the dependence, I need to, some of the implications are there in the biological aspects we needed to tackle as a brain, brain disease. So, tobacco dependence is a, a legible brain disease where the centers are involved by the nicotine, it is going to enter into the brain, the brain stem area, this is called ventral tegmental area, enter into the nucleus accumbens, which is stimulated by this ventral tegmental area nervous, which generates more and more of dopamine in the nucleus accumbens core. And later on, some period of time, over period of time, the persons are recruited, other brain areas, that is called brain prefrontal cortex area, and as well as extended amygdala areas. So, then the whole picture may come here. So, briefly, I am not going to detail about that, why addiction is, but before going to Sishay, we have to brief knowledge about that, what is going on in the addiction, then only we cater the best services for the person. So, here, this ventral tegmental area leads to a Im impulsive action on the dopamine release that make them to the more pleasure. So, they need to accomp style, accomp some about the impulsive act. Later on, dorsal striatum get into in recruited here. So, because of dorsal striatum, that is a blue, the violet area, the person is started to take the substances more and more, especially tobacco. So, this binge intoxication becomes a, a predominant important activity in his day. Then over a period of time, it means the experimental, 
स्टेज द पर्सन हु इज टेकन अकेजनली एंड देन बिकम टू द अकेजनल इन टू द बिंज बिंज फॉर्म ऑफ दैट सब्सटेंस यूजर एज टोबैको यूजर देन ओवर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम ही विल बिकम टू रेगुलर यूज हियर इन द रेगुलर यूज देर इज द अदर एरियाज ऑफ द ब्रेन गेट इन टू द रिक्रूटेड हियर दैट इज कॉल्ड स्ट्रेस एरियाज वी कॉल इट्स ए विथ इन सिस्टम अडेप्टेशन सो वेन एवर द पर्सन ही स्टॉप हिज द टेकिंग ऑफ टोबैको just physiologically with, with within the two hours of time of gap he will develop a sort of the withdrawal symptoms because of the extended amygdala activations that make them to again to get to more and more of the craves so craves here or desires are getting to the, by the prefrontal cortex or areas or activation and getting to recruited so it give the simples impulses to the sub, sub cortical areas that's called ventral striatum and as well as dorsal striatum areas so overall this this addiction cycle is continuous over period of time and becoming more and more recruited these neural circuits so what happened here this is a sort of vicious cycle is continuing so whatever earlier speakers are telling that whenever you take the substance you feel good and you feel happy you happy also so that that make them to the to take again and again over period of some st stopping of tobacco they make them to miserable and feel withdrawals so overall the dependency is a, a more or less is we call a two part problem a so physiological problem and as well as behavioral or psychological problem what is physiological problem we know that withdrawal symptoms are true the person is getting to anxious irritable and having of lack of concentration sleep disturbances in a loss of appetite or increase the weight gain all these are the symptoms these are physiological and cravings also so we needed to treat with the medications for physiological parts whereas the behavioral part the person here the initial the experimental stage to social use social use to regular use regular use to the addicted use this type of the pattern is becoming a habit type of the psychologically the means it becomes a habit so we needed to tackle with the behavioral change programs also so it's a one of the part of important part of the treatment so we need to combine then the best results may come now the important thing is why we have to commit to quit in this context the covid 19 context It's a very important teachable moment for the people who are having of tobacco use in a, in a disorder level and having of a harmful use pattern level or addiction level. So this is the movements which have the highest potentiality to uh, make them to quit or think to quit and make a, able to sustain the quit also. Because earlier speaker have told that COVID-19 infection rates are higher in the smoker population, and as well as ex-smokers also having of higher prevalence rate when compared to non-smokers. and the severity of covid-19 infection is getting more in the uh, smokers compared to non smokers so with this context we have to every screening for covid-19 infection itself is a one of the teachable moment here to advise a brief advice from the physician or brief advice from the any medical fraternity is giving the advice of the quit is very much essential to lessen the chance of covid-19 infection and as well as severity of the complications so the single most treatment modality which help the millions of the people in the world is the tobacco cessation treatment right now then the another teachable movements here whoever the having of hospitalization or surgery pre surgery and post surgery we the person is forced to need to abstain from the tobacco so this is the there we have to discuss with the patient have to introduce with the various modalities of the treatment like the nrt and having of other evidence based medicines then the the person chance of quitting and as well as sustain the quitting is will be the more and more so we have to utilize here the teachable moments here and every lung cancer screening the low dose ct scans wherever we have we have doing that so there the introduce about the brief advice and brief intervention for the tobacco cessation program related the things are very much essential for the public health aspects so here i needed to once again highlight the covid 19 pandemic is a very much good example for us to improve our system innovations and by reach the people of this public health issue like tobacco dependence here i am giving a, a funny example about that so how to make commit the people who are lacking of any motivation to quit so here we see there is no uniformity here so every so see 95% of the people in the world they know the especially smokers they know the complications they know about the lung cancer they know about the something harmful effects of the lungs but despite they are continuing why so how to make them to commit more so not only doctor advice see it's a cumulative effect first one point of the time when the he will be whether it's a accidentally or voluntarily he will get the advice from the doctor then the 
over period of time spouse is concerning for his substance use over period of time kid sees that they are also asserting about to stopping the alcohol and request from the friends also happening at last a cancer in the relative who is having of that in the relative then the thing to fit with a serious and determination manner so we need to this multiple strokes are required multiple times of quitting thoughts are required to get the a sustained attempt so every movement is very important to get to motivate the person here the different story cancer in the relative first incident is happened then the friends are getting the given the assertion about to stop the is tobacco and kids and spouse but lastly doctor's advice so mm -hmm. in initial story the first story doctor he feel see i have given so many advices for the patient to stop the tobacco but he not quit so my time is wasted even 1 to 2 minute of giving of advice to stop because the person is not hearing my words so that type of the uh, a counter repercussion is there in the even in the health health community also so here we have to analyze the whole picture so whenever our doctor advice is a one one important step whether he feel uh, in future he feel to think about seriously about to quit the attempt then here this tyler made implications for the, are there in the covid 19 context this you know that this is the very important prevention especially secondary prevention or primary prevention of the covid 19 infection by the tobacco cessation so benefits are here tripling not doubling even tripling also not only you stop the tobacco tobacco related harms even the covid infection also getting into the lesson and you know the uh, washing of hands physical distances not sharing of smoking e cigarette products all are important for the covid 19 uh preventions and as well as smokeless tobacco spitting in the public places is also lesson in the uh, need to lessen in the covid 19 context and of course nicotine hypo hypothesis for the covid 19 infection though it's insufficient is there but it's a better to uh, at least prevention and as well as treatment also they tried in the clinical trials by the nrt so, how to make to commit to quit so here i will tell the a technicalities of the your interventions like suppose the person who is unwilling to quit so here the best strategy is a brief, brief intervention in form of the motivation interviews motivation interviews like suppose for example how to express our empathy by because of giving a open ended questions we have to analyze why what sort of the reasons they are committing to take the uh, substance and what are the incidents are happening just open ended questions we have to ask and develop the discrepancy between the benefits and as well as his goals and as well as continuing of his tobacco use may happen whether he achieve his goals and values in the life and whenever he having of any substitutes or excuses for not to not to uh, commit to quit then we have to roll with the resistance and increase the self confidence about to handle of his previous situations or triggers without using of tobacco make them to reassure and acknowledge and make them to uh, some pacify about his confidence that type of the self efficacy measures will make them to the think to quit at least so thinking of quit is also very much important before successful attempt and who are having of ambivalence in their quitting then how to motivate the persons to get the quitting completely with the especially the fire approaches we are advocating here suppose for example how much relevant here to quit in the current situation for him for his uh, personal life healthy life as well as social life also for example i will give that the previous speaker has telling that the benefits are recruited time bound manner after stopping of the smoking for example if you stop within 2 hours you are uh, what's what's called your carbon dioxide levels are le getting lessened within 12 hours your carbon monoxide levels are getting uh, as well as non smoker levels within 1 year they, they, so within 2 to 4 12 weeks of time of the gaping of quitting there will be the chance of our lung functions are getting improved and within one year you will be getting to the your cardiovascular related issues are become lessen as compared to non smokers and within 5 years your stroke risk is are getting to off levels when compared to non smoker within 10 years your lung cancer risk is off levels as compared to non smokers within 15 years of levels like that you have to give the relevance for that uh, of the context and a highlight about the harmful effects of the, the continuous of the tobacco use right now onwards and you have to identify what type of the rewards you will be get and what type of the rewards the person usually he will be have the habituated to get these are the important things for to substitute with the tobacco rewards then will be he will be the most chances to motivate to quit also and you have to find the barriers to get to treatment and find the barriers to successful uh, abstinence what are the reason for the relapses if you observe 
the previous or recent relapses, we have to analyze it. What is the high risk situations? What are the triggers he is having up? What are the environmental contexts he is using that? So all these are making them to the address it with a behavioral manner or physiological or environmental uh, substitute manners. Then the person is finding some ways to get the uh, motivation to quit. And last but not least, the repetition is very much important. So every time, every time he is trying, he is uh, coming to contact with the health system. Our accustomed duty to give the advice of the tobacco quitting is very much essential and referral to the who is the having of expert in near and out of your people and having to referral and advice are very much essential then only the person is able to think at least a eight times in one time he will get the having of strong motivation then the these are the, the previous speaker has told that the brief intervention we have to follow as per the asking about systematic about tobacco user every visit and advice for that to what is the rational for to quit and assess his the level of his uh, severity and willingness and motivation and assist the person with the giving of counseling as well as referral and with the medications and make them to the follow-up contacts are very much essential if you are arranging as a like a program then the this is a this professional assessment we have to we usually do that with the severity of with whether phagastam tobacco nicotine dependence and as well as heaviness smoking index and biological assessment like cotinine levels also we have to analyze about the what type of the motivation he is having what type of the stage he is he is in. so we have to escalate the change of his motivation and ecological smoking behavior assessment is very much essential what type of the craving mechanism he is having of right now whether he is a impulsive craving whether he is a reward type of craving whether he is having a compulsive type of craving so that make them to the different modalities of the medications also helpful for the patient and what is the best plan how to we make first we have to aware about the severity then you have to give the tailor made interventions like behavioral as well as pharmacological and you have to make the craving management strategies with the psychological and as well as behavioral plans so here nicotine dependence treatment we are going that as a timeline bound from 1970s we rely more on the behavioral treatments now it's a we are really on the nrt like a patch gums and as well as which are the three are available in the india whereas in the in other we have the available the inhalers catheters all these things other nrt forms are available in the outside of india and in 2000 we have the bupropion this is a ndra medication norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor which is a atypical anti-depression we are using in the depression here it has the two times of quitting rate when compared to placebo the NRT and Pribopriyan have the increase the double the chance of quitting rates, whereas the Verniclin increase the chance of the triple times when compared to placebo it's available in the 2006 onwards. Whereas the e-cigarettes having a controversial role, but despite has a harm reduction perspective, uh, some WHO also recommending that that e of the low nicotine content e-cigarettes also they are having of advocate. So, what is the evidence-based intervention? Okay, what are they are, these are all the ranges, are, but what is the evidence? The first time pharmacotherapies we have the NRT and sustained bupropion relief and verniclin medications. NRT, the gums are available 1, 1 mg and 2 mg and 4, sorry, 2 mg and 4 mg, whereas the patches are available 7 mg, 14 mg and 21 mg. Depend upon the severity of the person. So, for, for example, if the person is using the uh, more than 20 cigarettes per day, then the, we have to start with the uh, 21 mg of patch and having of using the combination therapy with the NRT, the uh, long acting NRT like patch and as well as short acting NRT like uh, gums and lozenges we have to use. Even the specific of the NRT medications for specific uh, phenomenology of person, like so for example, the person is using here the self medication manner for his stress as a tobacco, then we have to use the patch is the very much essential good role. If the person is having a highest craving in the morning itself, the first two, within half an hour or within 15 minutes he is consuming a first tobacco then the lozenges are the best here evidence but when compared to bupropion here bupropion having of a atypical antidepression having of some side side effects and contraindication like suppose the person who is having of migraine who is having of epilepsy who is having of eating disorders who is having of bulimia nervosa or these are the person who is having of suicidal tendencies Though we have the contraindicated, contraindicated for this bupropion and as well as uh, verniclin, we have the we have to black box warning for the uh, verniclin. That's a suicidal tendency and suicide ideations and psychiatric uh, deterioration conditions. So we have to keep watch on it. Verniclin is available in the 0.5 and 1 mg. It is a starter package and as well as maintenance package are available here. So we have to utilize for the 
at 6 to 12 weeks of time for the usual standard manner for 6 to 12 weeks. First, initially the 4 weeks we have to use the further to uh, higher doses, then every 2 weeks we have to curtail down or taper down the dosing of this. It's a, but it's a, once again I am repeating that it is an individualized plan. So, some patients may require the long duration of the maintenance phase. Some people may require 6 months to 12, 12 months also. Some patients may require more than that also. So, depend upon the risk and benefit ratio and as well as individualized necessities, we have to consider that the duration of the treatment. The second line pharmacotherapy is the nortriptyline. It is a tricyclic antidepressant here. The major is available 25 to uh, 200 mg doses range. Usually, the best range is the 75 to 200 range mg, but it has the anticholinergic as a side effects for that. The dryness of mouth, constipation, blurring of vision, all these are the side effects. We have to uh, keep one watch on it and 16 and limited evidence is available for the clonidine and SSRI antidepressants, angiolytics, nicotine vaccines and e-cigarettes. Here. here the most evidence is there behavioral interventions when we have to combine with the pharmacological interventions then the having the it increase the chance of the double the uh, double the chance of efficacy of the single treatment. It means for example, verniclin which uh, it has the three times of horse ratio. If you add the behavioral intervention, there will be a chance of six times of quitting rates. Who should we prescribe the medicines? Medicines are evidence based. It is recommended for all tobacco users, even the unless they are the unless contraindicated for the medical leave. For example, level of the dependence, we have to use the level, level of the medication doses and combinations and who are having of multiple failed self attempts and tobacco users not able to abstain with the behavioral intervention alone, then we have to consider for the combination of therapy or medicines also. And who is having of high cigarette consumption per day like more than 10 cigarettes per day, then we have to think for the pharmacotherapy. If the person user feel need for external help, then we have to advocate pharmacotherapy as a first line. There are the additional approaches we are also form, form, apart from the combination therapy, pre-loading technique. So, whenever the we have to plan for to quit attempt, in advance we have to give the at least a two to two weeks to at least at one week to four weeks we have to advance we have to plan for to start the NRT treatments to increase the chance of abstinence rate and gradual reduction is one more modality we have to who are unwilling to quit abruptly then the patient is gradual reduction along with the NRT also advocated. Addition approaches like extended treatment whoever may require warranted. So, verniclin has a good favor up to 24 weeks and we have to utilize the advances of the neuroscience that is called precision medicine, genetical polymorphism who are the people are having the, they have the more benefit with the patches and NRT medications who are having a fast metabolizer then the people are getting the benefit with the verniclin. So, these are the approaches we have to follow. Then the last but not least is the psychosocial interventions. Here, problem solving techniques we have to advocate it usually. So, for example, the people having a uh, negative mood as a their withdrawal symptoms and depression, then the counseling is very much important, awareness and as well as medications also helpful for, for them. Who is having a weight gain as their concern, they feel that advocate the substitute mechanism with the, the high intensity workouts, physical activities and low calorie substitutes and nutritional counselor referrals, all that make them to the more chance to adapt there to as a countermeasure for the weight gain. And so, these are the, we have the, this is the time and contest we have to utilize for the as a COVID-19 to commit to quit for prevention of the COVID-19 infection and as well as for the health recovery and best possible with the collaborative care. Uh, like a surgical oncology, medical oncology, pulmonology, where the people are having a chance to uh, consult of tobacco users are there. They are the, all the people are have to be equipped with this tobacco cessation programs and consultations and cross referrals and wide range of interventions are very much essential. Not only doctors and medical fraternity, even healthcare workers also have the brief advice have the value. That is why wide range of interventions are required. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Naveen. Uh, most important takeaway lessons, takeaway lessons, commit to quit. Those who want to quit, there is hope. It is not impossible to quit with good pharmacotherapy, good counseling and the will. Definitely, you can quit tobacco. Please take home this message. Anyone who wants to quit, you can do it. Take the help of experts and it is definitely possible. So, with these words, I would like to conclude today's session on the World No Tobacco Day and again commit to the
theme of today that is commit to quit thank you